What was the number one selling motorcycle brand 100 years ago? Indian. Surprise! Bet you didn't know that. And while the Indian brand that has been revived by Polaris is far from a world leader today, it's one of the fastest growing motorcycle companies and has lit a fire under Harley Davidson's butt. Hooray for competition. If not for Indian, Harley might still be shoving the twin cam in their bikes. Instead, after years of bold new colors, Harley Davidson is moving in terms of actual new model design with the Pan America and Sportster S last year. And so, for this year's launch, we expected big things. Did we get them? No. This launch contained about as much mystery as the ending of the Titanic. Spoiler alert, the boat sinks. Pretty much all of the info given had been leaked beforehand. The official Harley-Davidson launch 2022 was a solid half hour of fluff that I subjected myself to so you don't have to. And I'm here to give you the Coles notes without any of the marketing BS. So stay tuned and prepare to be underwhelmed. And as always, if you find this content valuable, you can help this channel by liking the video and hitting the subscribe button. So, has Harley-Davidson done enough to put Indian in its place? Last year they went some way toward it, and maybe later this year they will again. But nothing they did in this particular launch is worthy of being called revolutionary. Why? No real new bikes. Harley-Davidson has been teasing the new, more affordable Sportster with a Revolution Max engine, probably a 975, since halfway in 2020 when I made a video about it. Check that out in the top right corner. And once again Harley teased this bike as if it's some kind of mystery, when in reality we've known about it for almost two years, ever since Harley sent a picture of it out to owners to ask their opinion. They teased it last summer during the Sportster S launch and they teased it again, as if we don't know what the whole bike looks like. It's this bike, just in different colors, and it still hasn't been introduced. But it will be later this year, probably this summer, the same time of year the Sportster S was introed last year. I get it, Harley needs to keep that new cycle going to look like they're keeping busy all year, so they're staggering the new bike launches as they tool up the factory. Unfortunately, that strategy has made this intro a bit of a dud, because there really isn't much going on here. First, let's go over the improvements to the CVOs. Bold new paint and an improved stereo. That's it. No improvements to the motor, the 117 is still the CVO power plant. Now that was fine when only the CVOs had the 117, but now that four non-CVO models are also running the 117, these top-of-the-line bikes need more. They cost over 40,000 US. They should be the absolute top-of-the-line in every way. That means a 131 or at least a 122. I have a feeling that Harley will put the 122 in the CVOs in 2023 so that they have something to talk about at next year's launch. Speaking of the 117, this was the biggest news at this year's launch. The Lowrider S gets this motor and a lift in rear suspension to increase ground clearance and three new 117 cubic inch ST models are introduced. ST for sport touring? So first, let's talk about the Lowrider S. This is the best thing in the launch. This is a good bike as far as big twins go and the improvements will make it more sporty. And by sporty, I mean sporty for a big twin Harley. It's no drag bike or canyon carving weapon, but it's decently capable while looking and sounding cool. Cool. There's also a light touring version called the Lowrider ST with a frame mounted fairing and hard bags which looks surprisingly good. A lot better than a road glide in my opinion. This is the bike in the soft tail lineup which replaces the sport glide and I have to say it's a step up. Between the bigger motor and the improved weather protection I think Harley got this right. The one reservation that keeps it from being a home run is the price. The regular Lowrider S is one of the better deals in the Harley lineup at $18,350 US dollars, but this bike costs $3,400 more and truthfully I'm not sure that a fairing and a relatively small pair of plastic bags are worth that much. In addition we have two more STs, a Road Glide and a Street Glide, both also powered by the 117 cubic inch motor. These are a result of the influence of the King of the Baggers race series in which Harley beat Indian. Apparently performance baggers are a thing now and Harley is offering these bikes with their bigger motors, solo seats and Olin's shocks because customers have been customizing their bikes in this way already. So why not just build a factory custom? Now let's be clear, the road glides and challengers raced in the king of the baggers have about as much in common with the stock bikes as NASCAR cars have with what's sitting in your local Chevy dealer's showroom. 
but winning on Sunday does translate to Monday sales, although I doubt that Harley has trouble moving road glides. In any case, as much as performance baggers seem an oxymoron, these bikes are actually pretty nice. If I was going to ride a bagger, that Street Glide ST would look pretty sweet. Mind you, for less money, you can buy a Goldwing or BMW bagger that will dust these every day of the week, but still, better performance is always good. So why am I not jumping for joy? Because both of these bikes cost 30,000 American dollars for the base model before adding dealer fees or taxes. Now if folks want to pay that, fine. But for that price, you can get a stock road or street glide, drop a stage 4 performance kit and shocks in it, and blow the fairings off any of the STs. I really have to do a video on the relative value of various Harleys soon. These two baggers basically just managed to match the performance of the Indian Challenger while costing thousands more. So the bottom line is that the Lowrider S is a good upgrade and would probably be the big twin I'd buy if I was in the market. The ST models are cool but overpriced for what you get, and the CVOs basically got no significant upgrades to justify those astronomical prices. There are now 4 other motorcycles that are rocking the 117 cubic inch engine, which are a lot less expensive than any CVO, so quite frankly, Harley needs to bump those up in displacement, and soon. Harley-Davidson is still the biggest American motorcycle manufacturer, and while these incremental changes were better than the bold new paint announcements of yesteryear, I'm not sure if they will keep Indian from continuing to eat up an ever-growing portion of the sales pie. While Harley-Davidson is swapping outfits on the same old touring and soft tail chassis, Indian is building a batwing fairing bagger that will feature the same liquid-cooled Power Plus motor of the Challenger and I'm guessing that it won't be long before we see that bike beating street glides in an Indian ad. Check out my video on the upcoming Indian Pursuit in the top right corner. What does Harley Davidson need most? First, they need an affordable sportster to get those entry level riders in the door. Come to think of it, if they want to appeal to younger riders, a 750cc flat tracker style bike would be great. I have a video about that too, up in the right corner. Finally, if Harley wants to build a serious performance bagger, they'll have to design it from the ground up around a punched out version of their Revolution Max motor. It's a good investment in the future as there will come a day when the Milwaukee 8 will no longer be able to meet those emissions standards. So I know that I'm going to get flack for being negative here, but when you look at this launch, there were really no new bikes introduced. Increasing the size of an engine and slapping on new shocks or a fairing is an upgrade, but does not make for a new model. Also, the Electroglide standard is gone from the Canadian website, which is seriously disappointing. Harley is introducing ever pricier bikes and getting rid of affordable ones, which is a risky strategy. Many middle class riders who want to be responsible with their dollars may end up pretty frustrated with a company that tries to look like it markets its bikes to the everyman but prices them to the elite. Especially since in their dark days it was the everyman who kept them afloat. Yep, I'll definitely have to make a video on value in motorcycles soon. So what do you think? Are you digging the Lowrider S? Better order one soon, as I have a feeling they'll sell out fast. Are the STs worth it? What bike would you like to see Harley-Davidson produce? Share your thoughts in the comments and cruise on. If you're interested in any of the gear that Brooke and I wear or use, or the camera equipment we use to film this channel, the links are below. Everything listed there was bought with our own money and we are not sponsored by any company. However, the links below are affiliate links and the channel is paid a small amount for referring you to shop at no additional cost to you. We do not recommend any products that we are not satisfied with ourselves, but we do strongly urge you to do your research and select the correct size for items like helmets and clothing. As always, thanks for watching, your support is greatly appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And whatever you ride, enjoy it. Wave at other bikers no matter what they're riding, we're all part of a brotherhood and sisterhood. Keep the rubber side down, shiny side up, and may the spokes be with you.